Hello everyone, this is Sally Metzler, also known as your Armchair Art Muse. I am director of the Union League Club Art Collection, and I am here to present our first art tale. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So just imagine you're walking down West Jackson Boulevard and you're entering the clubhouse. You're stepping inside and you see our magnificent lobby. Now head upstairs up on the beautiful grand staircase and look to your left. Right before you'll head on to the second floor landing, you will see two beautiful, colorful paintings hanging side by side. Yes, here they are. On the left, we have the summer visitor, and on the right, the woman at the writing desk. The artist is Edgar Ruprecht. Now let's focus for a few minutes on the painting on the right. We can see a woman at a writing desk. It's really hard to miss her creamy white shoulders, seductively revealed by the low drape of her silk navy dressing gown. I think the artist clearly must have known this woman well, to have had such an intimate view of her to be allowed inside her very private space. And indeed he did, as the woman is the artist's wife, Isabel McKenna. So how did Edgar Ruprecht meet Isabel? Well, Isabel was a student at Oxbow, the Art Institute of Chicago's summer art school established in Saugatuck, Michigan. Now back then around 1918, it wasn't called Oxbow, it was called the Summer School of Painting. Edgar Ruprecht was teaching there, and he couldn't help but notice this fetching young woman, fetching and very attractive woman, I should say, who had a lot of artistic talent, and that was his future wife, Isabel. So Isabel and Edgar were married in 1920, and five years later, they headed off to Munich first, and later Paris where they both learned from all the wonderful artists living there at the time. They just absorbed and drank up the beautiful and artistic atmosphere and everything that these two world-class cities had to offer. Around 1930, and this is in fact a passport photo of the, of the couple in 1930, so around this time they fell under hard financial circumstances and were forced to come back to the United States. They returned to Chicago, and there they began again a very successful artistic life together. So let's now return and focus on this beautiful painting depicting Ruprecht's wife, Isabel. What is she doing? Well, she's sketching with her left hand, in fact. Did you notice her very cute little companion watching her? This is her cat, Ghosty. Can you tell what Isabel is sketching? Well, she's in fact drawing her cat, and he, Ghosty, is eagerly watching his portrait in progress. There are all kinds of other beautiful objects dispersed throughout this warm and inviting room. Notice the candelabra with four candles sitting on the window ledge. Another light source in the room is provided by the fire orange red lamp. And speaking of orange, do you notice the quill pen with the plume orange feather? It's inserted into a green ink pot. Other fun details to notice are on the window ledge. Take a second and look closely. There is a small oval picture frame. Inside it features a young girl. So now we all know a little bit about this painting featuring this warm and inviting room and showing Ruprecht's wife, Isabel, and their cat, Ghosty. But I've yet to tell you how the Union League acquired the work. It entered the club in the late 1930s, but no one knew it existed. No one knew it existed until 50 years later in 1987. No, it was not lost. Rather, it was hidden under another painting. So how could this painting have been hidden for all these years? Well, let me tell you. So in 1987, Ruprecht's other painting that the club already owned and was hanging in the club, you see here, the summer visitor, it needed a little cleaning. So as often the case, the conservator took it to the conservation lab and removed the canvas of the summer visitor from the wooden stretcher. 
So lo and behold, can you even imagine what did the conservator find when he removed the canvas from the wooden stretcher? He found another painting underneath. And the canvas he found underneath was indeed that of his wife, Isabel, and cat, Ghosty. Can you really even imagine all these years from the late 1930s until 1987, we never knew we had the painting and what luck it was when we found out that we had two paintings, a two for one, as they would say. Also, let's just imagine how astounded the conservator must have been. So let's ask ourselves, why in the world, you could say, why did Edgar Ruprecht do such a thing? Well, what we found out, the club was able to contact the Ruprecht's daughter, Elizabeth, or better known as Betsy. Betsy informed the club that her father was a little absent-minded and also somewhat frugal. So it was very simple for him. Rather than buying another stretcher, he wanted to make another painting, he had an extra piece of canvas, and he simply placed it over the first one. I'm showing you here a late picture of Betsy Ruprecht and a work of art of hers. She was also an artist, just like her parents, and in fact, later, she taught at Oxbow and at the School of the Art Institute. She died in 2004. So I'd like to now take you back to the other painting by Ruprecht, The Summer Visitor. Who is this summer visitor, we have to ask? Well, we know that the young woman lounging on the dock is his sister, Edith. Now, indeed, you might say to yourself, ah, she looks a little bit like his wife, Isabel. But we know from documents that, indeed, this is Edith, and she did come visit Ruprecht at Oxbow, remember the summer school in Sagatok, Michigan. So this would have been the time before the Ruprechts headed off for Europe likely painted then around 1924. Now, Edith's companion, this young boy, could be a younger brother, but it remains unclear his identity. Let's notice, though, how Ruprecht captured the mood and atmosphere of a relaxing summer day, I think just to a T. See how he expertly communicated the sun reflecting on the water, and let's notice the attire of his sitters, they perfectly evoke the time of the Roaring Twenties. Look at Edith's white tights, her low-strapped shoes, and particularly her bobbed hairstyle that was so popular with the young ingenue, as well called the flappers. Returning to both of Edgar Ruprecht's paintings at the club, he has the uncanny ability, I think, to place us in his space to make us feel as if we were there with him. He invites us. He invites us to bask, for instance, in the afternoon sun, sitting on the river dock in Sagatok, Michigan, or sketching in a sun-drenched room, keeping company with the family cat. I think after learning more about these paintings and reflecting on their beauty, you'll know why these works are two of my favorites. And I hope when you step back into our beautiful clubhouse, you'll take a closer look to admire these great works, these treasures of our collection. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed our first art tale, and I look forward to meeting with you again soon.